Exude premium service, exude uh, before, during, and after friction-free service, and think about what's best for your clients before it's best for you, and you're going to be okay and have a future-proof business. And we need to keep an eye on what is our North Star, and that's our buyers and sellers. Not what technology companies are doing, because those guys are reactive to what our buyers and sellers are doing. We need to think about what they want, and we need to start thinking about it now, and we need to start thinking about it way sooner before they are ready. What up, masters? First off, I just want to wish you guys an awesome new year. Man, you know, 2018 is just going to be outstanding. I mean, we have so many awesome things going on in 2018. Just super, super excited to be focused and purposeful. Man, I, I just can't wait. And, you know, I, I hope you guys have a safe, happy new year. I want to thank you as well for listening to our podcast. Guys, this is episode number 99. Imagine that, 99 episodes straight. So I'm doing something a little unique now with this. First off, well, we've got Nobu Hada on this episode. Nobu is the member of director engagement for the National Association of Realtors. This guy is awesome, my friends. He's somebody you need to be listening to in real estate. I mean, he's getting out there. He's talking about what's changing, the things you need to know about if you're in real estate, the disruptive forces, what are some of the biggest challenges, the trend, the industry. What he does is he goes around, guys, in all the states and he talks to the state boards and the state members about what's going on in a national, you know, 3,000 foot view. You know, what's going on from that perspective? And it, it was just awesome to have him on the podcast. Plus, he's got great personality, brings a lot of wisdom and experience. So this is an outstanding episode for you. All right, doing something a little different, my friends. Met Gary V October 28th this past year. When I met him at the photo shot, he had said he would make my podcast happen. And at that time, what I said was, Gary's going to be my episode 100. So... I still have not yet been able to confirm Gary on the podcast. I am going out to meet Gary again. I bought VIP tickets to Agent 2021. Would love to have you guys join me if you're open. Agent 2021. Just go to my website, davidihill.com forward slash Agent 2021 and get yourself a ticket. Okay, that said though, I'm going out there and part of the reason I'm going out there is because I want to make this happen. I want to make this interview happen. Plus, I want to learn from Gary, obviously, and, and you know build our business to that, those ridiculously high levels through social media. That said though, because I made that commitment that Gary was going to be episode number 100 and Nobu, which is episode 99, which is a fantastic episode. Hey, don't sleep on this one. I am putting the podcast on hold, guys, literally indefinitely until I can book Gary for episode 100. That's my commitment. It is what it is. You know, I've done this almost two years straight and I'm literally, I'm putting it on hold. So, you know, hey, I just want you guys to know that. And hopefully I'm going to make this happen in a couple weeks. That event is January 24th in Miami. So that's my intention. We'll be back up by February. But... It is what it is, as they say. Putting things on hold, It's it's been a super honor, pleasure. The next time you're going to hear me with an episode is with Gary V, And I'm super excited for that. But for now, listen, I want you to enjoy Nobu Hada. He is just crushing it. And if you're in real estate, these are the things you need to know going into 2018. So again, my friends, I wish you a fantastic new year. Be safe. Prosper, and I'll see you in 2018. Enjoy Nobu. Hey, Masters, welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. And today we have a special treat. We are with Nobu Hada, and I, I know that is not a name that we hear every day. And Nobu is awesome. I actually met uh, Nobu at the Mass Association of Realtors convention. You came in and did a great presentation for us on branding and real estate. And then you also did, uh, which I want to talk about today as well, a fantastic presentation for us on leadership to the leadership group. So, hey, Nobu, first off, thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Awesome. And so you are a little bit about you. You're a, you're the director of member engagement uh, for the National Association of Realtors. You're also a former top producing realtor. Uh, you uh, sold real estate for, I think, eight years, right? You live in Chicago right now. Yep. And uh, your wife is also a, a current realtor, 
Like I said, I know you from the event. You talked to us about branding, member engagement, leadership, all kinds of really great things uh, going on right now in this industry. And there's actually a lot of things changing in this industry. So again, I thank you. And, and you're obviously with the National Association of Realtors. So man, just first off, what is the Director of Member Engagement? Tell us about that role. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> I'm in the communications department at NAR. What Director of Member Engagement means is it's been kind of everywhere the last couple of years. But you know, essentially, my job is to, is to kind of keep an eye out what's happening uh, on the street to really kind of keep an eye on what's happening in terms of uh, the forces in the industry, consumer trends and things like that, and to create an atmosphere where where folks see value in the association and, and, and where we're going as a group. You know, now that I get to just sit and watch trends and and uh, kind of execute them with my wife here in Chicago, it's been, uh, it's been a fun couple years being able to be that kind of proponent of change within the industry and to help members like you and the folks that, uh, who are listening right now get an idea of what's going to be in their industry going forward, what trust and value is, and then uh, help put it in their business now. I mm, love that. Yeah. So you said a, f- a few things. You watch trends. Um, you talked about some of the things that are coming up at, going forward in the real estate industry. So you know, what do you see right now as, as some of the biggest changes to our industry? And what are some of the things that we should be looking for? Well, it, it depends on what you're looking at. You know, if you're, we're looking from the perspective from the consumer, boy, and I got in this business as a sophomore in high school and to be able to see consumers be on the same level information wise as as agents now has been kind of the craziest part. And it's only becoming more and more so mm. uh, the empowerment that consumers have right now is absolutely amazing. And I just went through that as a buyer as a first time as a non realtor last year. And man, it was a a game changing experience for me. So when you say they have almost the same power, what do you mean by that? Like, let's clarify that. Uh, well, I mean, it's just they think that they can go and sell a home. They think that they can go and, and dictate the experience. What they don't know is that everything not online has become the thing, right? I, like what I forgot about real estate was how emotional it got. And as a consumer, you're unprepared for that because you just, you don't do this too often. Mm. There, you know, in general, there's a lot of information online. It's, it's now the realtor's role to bring wisdom to that, to bring uh, experience to the transaction and, and to help people uh, anticipate what they're going to be feeling to really connect what value and trust and relevance means now to folks who think that they can do everything. Mm. And, and it's, I mean, honestly, it's obviously the internet that's created that, right? The buyer, the consumer, uh, the seller feels like, okay, I can just go online. I can get anything I want. I don't even need realtors, right? Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's surreal. And yeah, they can do it, but it's just so hard. And I think talking to for some of my owners in my neighborhood, for example, they don't realize how hard it is until after they're uh, neck deep into the whole process. And that's where, uh, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of value is now for, for agents is to help people anticipate what they're going to be doing now and say, hey, you know what? Here's what we do day in and day out. So it's a full time job. Um, and what I mentioned to you guys when uh, when I was with you, both in the leadership and on the uh, speaking end of things was we need to start helping people anticipate and see that and feel it beforehand. And that's the key to what lead generation is going to be going forward. So talk to us about that. When you say that, like, what does that look like? Well, for example, you know, when I was an agent and now my wife now, the process of selling a home in general is, is difficult. And uh, what we have done as an industry is, is make it look simple. And because the best of us, what we do day in and day out for our clients is, hey, we insulate you and we make it, make it so that you don't feel 99.9% of the grief that we feel day in and day out as an agent. Um, and, and what I tell my wife to do and what I did as an agent in, in all the markets I've been in is we had to bring real back into the, into the equation and to get them to feel what it is that we feel day in and day out. Um, information now is the, is the new trust building collateral online and everything online about what we do as, as real estate people is, is revolving around real estate search. And I don't need realtors for that. Mm. You know, when it, everything else now is the value proposition. And what I, what I told you and what I told the folks back in mass uh, as a whole was put yourself out of business. Envision yourself uh, in a world where realtors don't exist and you're going to realize pretty quickly what it is that we do that makes us relevant and makes us trustworthy and makes us valuable in that transaction. Um, and, to, and whoever is doing that the best now, online, compelling people offline with that information to say, hey, you know what, this is why you should trust me. That's what lead generation is. And you're seeing that uh, across the country now. 
Mm. Yeah, something that you said at, at when when you know in the presentation was that when everybody's doing the same thing, every, you know, it's uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm I, I might be misquoting it, but when everybody's doing the same thing, um, then not, nobody stands out, right? So you got to do something different in order to stand out. So people's perception now of of a real estate agent is okay. I hire Nobu, I hire David, I hire John Smith. It, it doesn't make a difference. It's all the same. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just the sea of sameness that we're, that we're wallowing in as an industry. There are, there's 1.3 million realtors and then you got another eight or 900,000 non realtor licensee type folks who can, who can do a transaction in some States and they're all doing the exact same thing. So when you're looking at it for things from the consumer's point of view, when we're, when I'm seeing as a consumer, the same thing over and over again, it's just a bewildering thing. The top two questions being asked online How's the market and, and can I afford it? You know, affordability. What's affordability like in this market? And all we reply to them is three bedrooms, two baths, two car garage. All they're going to think is that we're, that's all we're important for. So the idea is surface everything in that transaction that people didn't know about and using that as collateral to say, hey, you know what? This is what is truly involved in the transaction. Here, here's where we go. It's how my wife has succeeded in, in Chicago where not only do you have disruptive forces within the industry working its way here, but you have – you have lawyers doing a, a, the majority of the transaction here in this town and to be able to say, hey, you know what? This is what the lawyers does and this is what I do and I keep all that stuff together and actually you get the lawyer to say, hey, this is what Shay does, who is my wife. This is what Shay does to keep, to keep the transaction together beyond what I do is an amazing thing. And when you're kind of changing the dialogue and you're picking up the, the playing field and moving it is how I, how I like to put it. You know, move that playing field to something that a consumer just like, oh, wait a minute, I get it now. This is why you're worth it. Mm. Yeah, I find too is any time that you can, you can give a seller a, a bit of information because again they think like they know everything anyway going into it. Um, so if you can tell them something they don't know, that typically is a win. Oh, absolutely. There's uh, every aha moment that we have as a business now is now marketing collateral. What do you mean by that? Every time a client says, "I never thought that was important," or mm. "Wait a minute, that's great. I didn't know that." Those are marketing things, and that's what needs to be put out there on our website presence and our yeah. and just marketing no matter what we do. That's right. That was what you talked to us about is uh, actually having uh, everything out there, right? Anything they could think of that could potentially go wrong or things they should be planning for, you have all that, right? You get it to them ahead of time. Yeah, absolutely, and doing it in a human way. And that's what I think is uh, – one of the things that anybody in this industry now should be taking note of is that you have all these technology companies really humanizing that. They're humanizing marketing in a way that regular people can understand. Um, you look at Zillow, you look at Realtor.com. Those guys are really going after the heartstrings and the emotional strings in their marketing. And uh, whether it's you know making somebody laugh or making somebody cry, what mm -hmm. they're doing is, is compelling something that's very different out of people that we just aren't used to in this business. And what we should be doing as an industry is giving everyone these aha moments to get them offline and into our back of our cars and to be able to have those moments with us. Like this house looks nothing like it did online in person more quickly. And that's what I did as an agent is, you know, I, I would keep track of how long it took. And it, you know, it got down about three and a half weeks that I can compel somebody offline. My wife has gotten it really, really quickly here in Chicago. Um, and this, the markets that we're delving in, throughout the United States calls for this. We have to stop wasting our time online and getting the, our buyers and sellers to do the same. But how do you do that? I mean, when these guys are spending hundreds of millions of dollars, if not more, on, on capturing all these buyers and capturing their attention? Well, there, it's, it's a mind share issue, right? You have to play the game. You have to out-humanize them. And that's, you know, as a human being, it's, it's the best thing that we can do as an agent, but make it more local, right? Um, and I think the best thing that we can do is to get our clients, our happy clients, to do the humanization of our businesses for us, which is why putting out better reviews, putting reviews on our websites, mm. um, having them talk about what it was like to go through a multiple offer situation um, and to use that as marketing is something that right now we, we need to do. And that's something that no one else can do in this business. We have for 100, and 100, 100 plus years made buyers and sellers happy. The trick is to get somebody who doesn't know what happiness and what a good real estate transaction feels like to think about it before they start wasting their time online. It's really kind of gaining this whole idea about mindshare way before the technology companies are doing it. Mm, that's a great point. Yeah, you know, one thing we're working on right now, just coincidentally, is I did my first one today. I went to a local, um, there's a cafe 
in the same uh, office park as my office. And I went over and I interviewed the manager today and because they literally have like the best salads in Westboro. So humanizing it, right? We I did a, a quick little two minute tour and interviewed the manager really, really quick about the cafe and then posted on social media. And I'm not even asking him for business. I'm just sharing, hey, you want the best salad in Westboro? Here's where you find it, right? And, and people think and people think that's like, oh, man, that's a waste of time. But no, it's not. The reason why I want to live in that neighborhood is to have that best salad in Westboro, right? So to stand out from that noise, to go beyond the three-bedroom, two-bath, two-car garage, which I don't need you for anyways, that is the perfect – Like, oh, I get it. That's why you're a neighborhood expert. That's why being an expert in in a community matters. That's a great way to do it. And it only took you two minutes to talk about what that person was passionate about. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, and it's just short and sweet. I, I'm I'm planning on interviewing my yoga studio, my, the YMCA, my my CrossFit gym. Like every, I've already got it all planned out. So, just again, you kind of you want to bring some value. Like, hey, you want to live in Westboro? Then this is what you need to know. You know what I mean? I, that's my goal. Get through every, go, you know. And what, and what's the cool question to ask those guys when when you're done with it? It's like, why do you love this neighborhood? Yeah, that's a great. You know, question. little little things like that that. They made a pointed effort to go and open a small business in that community to get the reasons why is a really cool thing. And that's an awesome way to kind of end that whole thing. I love that. I love it. I actually am writing down that question as as we speak. So thank you. I just (laughs) added it to my list of questions. All right. I want to switch gears a little bit. Well, I do want to back up, though, because you had mentioned somebody. You're, You're right. Everybody, when they find out we're in real estate, they say, how's the market? Right. It's like the most common question. Yeah. What do you say to that when someone asks you that? Or, or what, better yet, what, is, what does your wife say to that? It really depends on who they are. I think if you know them really well, to be upfront in general, to be authentic as possible is something that you should aim for, really, right? So if you know them, you know, it's, it, to go a little deeper is, is cool. But you got to tell them. You got to tell them the truth. You know, it yeah. sucks if you're a first-time buyer. If you're somebody that's just getting by trying to get your credit down, the best thing to do is start talking to a mortgage person now. You know, if you're a seller right now, it's fantastic. But I get it. There is a definite, like, where am I going to land after I sell my home that I know I can sell a uh, lack of confidence that we've got. So depending on where you are in, in your life, it could be great or it can be horrible. Mm. But to be the realtor and that to help you guide you through that is is a thing that, that realtors really should be talking about. It's really at this point, uh, 99.9% confidence. We It's not an inventory issue that we're dealing with now. We've got a confidence crisis. You know, people are you know, they don't know when you, when you don't know where, if you're going to have your job or if you, you don't know where you're going to be when you're retired, these are all things that people are thinking about now, which is why they're searching for things online. But if you ask him, Hey, how do you feel about the market? Um, what are you thinking about when it, when it comes to selling your home, Yeah, drawing kind of what they're thinking out sooner is key to a better relationship with those folks then. And to be able to point them someplace, saying, you know, to be able to say, and what my wife does really well is if you want to keep an eye on what's happening in the market, you'll sign up for my email updates on my website. Just go to shayhada.com. Go to my website, sign up for my blog post. So I'll keep you up to date there. And when you're ready, just give me a shout. Mm, love it. Good stuff, man. Hey, masters, we're going to get you right back to the show. A couple cool things going on. First, Listen, Gary V, Agent 2021 is coming up this January 24th. Guys, I will be there. We'd love to hang out with you. Spend some time. If you're interested, go to my website, which is davidihill.com forward slash agent 2021. Get details on Gary's event or just reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you about it and I will be there and love to hang out. Another thing is if you love podcasts, I'm assuming you do because you're listening to it, you're going to absolutely love Audible, audiobooks by Amazon. Audible is the largest resource of audiobooks out there. They have every book you could think of on audio. And guys, listen to this. You can get yourself a free copy of a book on me. Just go to davidsfreebook.com. Get yourself a free copy. Listen, here's what I would say. Go get yourself uh, John Acuff. He's got a book called Finish. Absolutely fantastic. Or if you want, stick with the Gary V theme. Get yourself a copy of Ask Gary V. Now listen, again, this is absolutely free. Yep, they're going to ask you for your credit card info up front. But if you cancel within 30 days, they will not charge you and you get to keep the book. Guys, how do you lose? You can't lose. Try it out. I guarantee you're going to keep the service anyway, but that's up to you. Again, absolutely free, davidsfreebook.com. And finally, guys, listen, I wish you a happy new year and 
This is episode 99, so episode 100 will be featuring Gary V, as I already mentioned. Gary said he would make it happen. I know he's a man of his word, so I'm going to hold him to that, and I am putting things on hold until I get Gary's commitment. Hopefully, it's only a couple weeks or a couple months. Could be a couple years. Either way, guys, I just thank you for listening. I thank you for everything you've done to help us grow, and I hope to be back really soon. You rock. Enjoy the rest of Nobu Hada. All right, so let's talk about the disruptive forces you mentioned earlier. Give us a, what, what, like, what's going on? What should we be uh, paying attention to? Well, I think, you know, people like to get up all up in arms with portals and, you know, they're going to be a broker and all that other good stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I don't fear that. You, and you shouldn't, frankly, either. You referring to the big Z? Yeah, big Z roll with all of those guys, right? Here, well, here's the thing, though, is that most people already think they're a broker anyway, so they don't really need to be one. You know what I mean? That's because that's point. the kind of mind share that they've built. But I look at 10 years out, right? I look at the fact that Uber has really changed the way people deal with other people, deal with strangers. Because if I would have told you five years ago that you'd use an app to call a stranger to come pick you up, and take you to the airport. These are things that you would never have done. And now it's a verb, right? Mm. You look at the way companies like DocuSign have thrived outside of real estate. There are more signatures happening outside of real estate on DocuSign than there are inside. So, you know, you've got all of these forces. What's definitely going to happen at some point is somebody's going to put it all together, right? As the realtor in that space now, We have to stop racing to the bottom. We have to stop trying to compete for leads and start earning them rather than trying to race to the bottom and compete, you know, with 30 other people for, you know, one phone call. You know, it really is now about premium service versus the versus the bottom of the barrel, which we're all going for. I look at the way Amazon and Uber and all of these companies have affected the way people buy and sell things and the way they see value in things. And that is truly the most, the most disruptive thinking. And does it change overnight? No. But in 10 years, 20 years, especially with our kids, our kids are going to have a new normal that we can't even think of right now, right? Mm. So it's dealing with that. So it, you have to be the Uber of real estate in a sense that immediate acknowledgement is a thing. You have to be the Amazon of real estate in terms of like, I want everything. I, want, I hire you not just for you, but for your team of mortgage people, title people, insurance people, contractors, plumbers, electricians, and all that stuff. And to be able to dictate what a good real estate transaction feels like for people that won't know what it is. You know, If you play your cards right, you won't get a question of value. It, it will be about, I'm going to throw my money at you, man. I, yeah. I've, been want, I've been stalking you for the last three years as I paid off my student loan debt. I, I, I get what it is now, and I trust you implicitly, and it's worth all that money in the world. Yeah, I think it was you uh, that said, you know, when people are asking you to reduce your commission, it's because they don't see the value. Right, absolutely. It's just, we compete for the bottom. We race to the bottom. And to just say, no, this is what I do. This is, I know you don't get it because you've done this once in seven years and once in 10 years. But when this is all said and done, you're going to want to throw money at me. Mm, because that's it, it, right. Because it really isn't about... It really isn't about three bedrooms, two baths, two car garage. It's how you deal with the adversity. And it's my job to help you through this transaction. Um, and you'll feel like I'm underpaid when it comes to that. And if you think about that, right, that's, that's the way all these other companies work. It's, it's, it's giving value until it's ready for that moment of truth. Google calls it the zero moment of truth where people are like they're ready, they're ready to go, and they're willing to do whatever it takes to get their task done. And the realtor needs to be there sooner for that. Yeah, there was something else you mentioned too. I wrote it. I, I'm looking at my notes now. At the presentation, you said people go to Amazon to save time and money. People go to realtors to save time and make money. I thought that yep. was brilliant. Yeah, that's one of those things we're going to have to start doing because uh, Amazon has kind of made it so that people are programmed to go to that site to save a dollar fifty-two on a box of freaking toilet paper, and that. When you think about it, it's like those same people would not have bought a box of toilet paper once a month uh, at Target. You know what I mean? So. They're programmed, save time, save money. Our job is, is to be able to say, we're going to save you time, but you're going to make a lot of money by using somebody like me. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So what do you see as the biggest challenges right now with real estate or, or maybe the biggest mistakes we're making? I think the inability to pivot, and it's not even change. It's, it's pivoting. It's little, small, incremental bits of change that create 10 years down a, a more sustainable and future-proof business. I, I look at things like this, right? My wife as an agent, just got one of her first 
uh, transaction uh, purchase agreements where it called for Bitcoin as the way to pay for the home. And I looked at her and I, and I said, would you have known what to do with this if I wasn't around? Because really all it is is, is somebody who's worried about security of the transaction trying to use a cryptocurrency to buy a home. And all you need to say to the agent and to this buyer that, hey, I'm using a, a secure transaction management system that is perfectly secure. And if you want to use Bitcoin, you need to cash it out now and put it into a bank account so that it works like a normal cash transaction in two months when we close. And that was 30 seconds right there. But most agents would have no idea. Mm, I, yeah, what I have to no do idea. With that. Yeah, right? So the inability to really kind of keep an eye on what is our North Star, and that's our buyers and sellers. And we need to keep an eye on them, not what technology companies are doing, because those guys are reactive to what our buyers and sellers are doing. We need to think about what they want, and we need to start thinking about it now, and we need to start thinking about it way sooner before they are ready. The other shoe that needs to drop is that as an industry, it is tough for us to really save and plan multiple business cycles out, which that's what this new economy calls for. You're going to need to think about somebody who won't buy or sell till next year. And how are you going to keep the loyalty of that consumer, that buyer, that seller, what have you, until they're ready? So if we can do anything now, it's keeping the North Star, our buyers and sellers, first and foremost in our minds. And if we start anticipating what they want and what they need sooner, we're going to be okay. But we just, we, initially, we can't do that. We're so romantic about the past. It's not even funny anymore, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And we just can't do that. The other thing you talked about was empathy. And, you know, em- I thought that was, that was really a key, too. And I really, that was one thing I really, I took a lot from that, but that was the one thing that's really stuck with me was empathy, really. So yeah. talk to us about the empathy when it comes to real estate. Yeah, the uh, empathy in your marketing, empathy in your processes. You know, I, I think one of the things that we take for granted, especially with, a, with somebody who's bought or sold for the second or third time with us, right, is that we think that they know what they're doing and they don't, right, because they don't do it as often as we do. Um, but empathy when it comes to that new buyer or seller, especially the, in my mind, an emerging market is going to be the first time seller who right now feels very burned from their agent. You know, I look at it this way. The person that's asking you to reduce your commission or to kick it back to you doesn't know why they should be asking. All they know is that Google, right, HGTV, all these other all these other entities are telling them that they should do it instead of us going, well, why do you feel that way? Or we, we get mad. And we say no, and we don't, and we try to explain away why it is that uh, we're worth money rather than showing it. Being able to say, hey, I understand what you're asking for, but here's the reason why. You know, we like to compare ourselves as an, as an industry to doctors and lawyers and accountants, but I don't see any, uh, I don't see any of those guys reducing their fees. And on top of that, I don't see buyers and sellers, regular people going to their doctors and lawyers and accountants saying reduce your fee, right? Yeah. Stand for something, man. They'll realize if you play your cards right and if you do it early enough, they'll realize that we are one of the most underpaid industries out there. And really, you know, just think of it this way. The commission-based business in general, there are not a lot of us anymore, right? There are not a lot of, of those industries out there. You talk to your average 20-year-old kid, they don't understand what commission-based businesses are. Mm. And to be able to say, hey, you know what, I get it. You know, they watch these million dollar listing TV shows and think that money is freely and granted we like to fake it before we make it as a group of people. But, you know, we, we got to get beyond all that and be able to say, Hey, you know what? I get what you're asking, but this is, these are my true costs. And I was with a brokerage today, for example. And, and I, you know, I, I told them that they should be talking about how much it costs to do, to make one of these video email, uh, video, uh, uh listing packages for, for people. Because if most sellers knew that it costs anywhere from a thousand to four thousand dollars to do it, they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it at all. But we like to say, "Oh, look at us! Look at how awesome we are! We do these services for them." Try a little bit of a transparency. Try a little bit of empathy to be able to say, "Hey, you know what? This is the reason why I do this. This is the reason why you won't." It's like I have these camera people, I have these nerds, and I and I have these processes that that make this two thousand dollar expense worthwhile, right? Got to try a little bit of that because every other industry is really learning how to put empathy into their marketing today. Dude, absolutely fantastic stuff, my friend. Anything that um, I probably should have asked you that I that I didn't ask you? Nah, man. If there's anything that I would recommend anybody listening to this right now is exude premium service, exude uh, before, during, and after friction-free service, and think about what's best for your clients before it's best for you. 
and you're going to be okay and have a future proof business. Awesome. What, any books that you would recommend um, that, that are probably relative to our conversation today? Uh, you know, <laughs> I was, when I read, I try to get away from real estate as much as possible. But I like, I, I've been reading a lot, of, a lot of books from Nate Silver, the guy behind 538, talking about where algorithms are going. I nerd out on things like that. And a book called This Is Why You Should Trust Me. It's a book by a, a guy who was a con artist. It was fa- it's a fantastic book, but it was a guy that figured out how to use trust and empathy to, to make his world go around. Um, and that's something that uh, was, uh, to me, kind of a formative thing in the, over the last couple of years as I've migrated out of sales and into this position I am here in real estate. That's great. There's, a, there's another book um, by Robert Greene. I don't know if it's called Mastery. You ever heard of that book? No. It's, it's all stories, um, the story of Napoleon, and, but it's also a story of, of the same thing as you just said, a con artist. Uh, and they share like how he manipulated people and he kind of shares his techniques and stories. So another fantastic book. So you said, um, this is, this is why you should trust me. That was the name of the book, right? All right. Awesome. So guys, if check out David's free book.com on audible, get yourself a free copy of that book, David's free book.com. And if that's not available on audible, uh, check out mastery, uh, uh, which is also a fantastic book by Robert Green. All right, Nobu. So how do our listeners get in touch with you? Uh, I'm on Twitter at Nobuhada. You can follow me and my baby pictures on Facebook if you want, uh, but hit me up on email anytime. Nhata, N-H-A-T-A at Realtors.org. Awesome. And and you already kind of answered my final question, but I got to end the interview with the final question, which is on my listeners or our listeners' path to sales mastery. What is the one thing you want them to take from this interview today? Just do something, man. Do something that your clients will care about, especially the ones that never met you. Awesome, man. Thank you. All right. Thanks, David. Masters, if you know me, you know health and nutrition is number one. And that's why I'm an advisor for AdvoCare products. Listen, in my opinion, these are the best products on the planet, guys. You get what you're supposed to get, right? I use the products for health. I use the products for energy. I use the products for wellness. So we have all the different lines from Spark, you know, starting your day with a great energy shot all the way to pre-workout. It's whatever your goals are, right? It's whatever your goals are. You can check out the products at www.livelongersmarter.com. That's my website. Or reach out to me. I'd love to have a 30-minute or, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30-minute conversation with you just talking about your health and nutrition goals and what I can do to help you achieve those goals. So, again, products, energy line, wellness line, whether it's joints, you're getting up there in the age, you just want to keep take care of yourself. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, one of the greatest compliments I get is people, uh, you say, wow, I, I, you look amazing. I cannot believe you are the age you are. You know, weight loss. I've helped lots of people, guys, lose weight. Not just lose it, but keep it off with the products and the, the cool thing is i'd say 75 percent of the people who start with our products they continue using our products even after they initially tried them which has been amazing and strength if you're into bodybuilding then hey you know rich fronin okay i don't know if you know who rich fronin is uh he's an advocate for uh for advocare as well so amazing products you can see us we're featured on nascar uh, professional soccer college basketball college football men's health magazine last month these are the real deal, guys. LiveLongerSmarter.com is the website. Or reach out to me. if you Like I said, if you want to have a personal conversation with me, just send me an email in the subject line. Just put Advocate Products. And I'd love, like I said, schedule a 15 to 30-minute call with you to talk about your health and nutrition goals. Guys, you rock. Live longer, smarter. And as Gary Keller eloquently said, if you don't take care of your body, where are you going to live? You rock. You are listening to One More Sale with your host, David I. Hill, author of the Sales Playbook. Get your copy at www.thesalesplaybook.net.